Hello, Paul Hamilton here. We're going to have a look at hopscotch. Um, I want this to keep this in our mind as well. These are some of the coding rules I came up with for my students, just talking about really good traits and habits to get into. But we're going to look at hopscotch today, and we're going to look at some really um, challenging maths problems for about grade three, four, five area, um, using hopscotch to talk about and teach uh, degrees and so forth. So I've got Emily helping me today. Okay, Emmy, let's start us off by doing a create a new project in hopscotch. And we're going to do a blank project. And as Emily pulls over a character, um, I'll talk to you about our challenge today. We're going to do a very simple function, and that is when our character is tapped, we want her to move with a trail, and we're going to create some 2D shapes. Okay? So, Emmy, let's go with add a new rule. Let's do something like when play button is tapped, and we'll show the audience here um, the drawing tool, which is actually uh, the move with trail. So it says there, leave a trail, drag that over. And this is where we're going to create a square, Emily. So off you go. So move forward 300. Yeah, that all looks good. So could you press play just to see what that looks like? Because we want our kids to keep testing. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, what do we want her to do now, Emily, is we want her to turn. Okay, so let's put in a, a turn. And that comes into, where is that in? That is in the movement, I think. Yep. And what degrees do we want it to turn? Well, this is where we can start to talk to our kids about degrees. Let's go with a 90. And can you test that, Emily, just to make sure we're on the right path? Always get kids perfect. Now, if it's a square, we might have to move the same distance, hey? So I'm going to let you go now, Emily, and see if you can finish off making the square. And we will watch as she actually does this. Now, what you see Emily doing here is she's actually repeating a pattern. And for those that have used hopscotch before, you don't have to keep testing Emmy once you've got, got the uh, gist of it. What you'll see Emily doing is she's kind of repeating the pattern there. And then we're going to talk to Emily about how we could make this more efficient code by putting in a repeat. Um, and that's a really important concept as we're learning to code. Um, but you can see here she's busy putting trails, she's doing a lot of testing along the way. You can get your kids to actually change the colours of the lines. She's got one more to go and she's actually rotating a 90 each time, which is fantastic. And so she's almost there. Doing a great job. You can get your students to work in pairs too, I think. Well done, Emily. We've made a beautiful square. So let's go back to edit. And we talked about before this tutorial, getting rid of all those repeat codes. So can you throw all those codes away, Emmy? And we're actually going to introduce the uh, repeat piece of uh, block code. So I think it's in the control flow, M, the blue one. Bring over repeat. And Emily's going to drag that in. And thinking about how many times we want to repeat, which is about four, I think it was repeated, so we'll put four. Now she's got very little code, a more efficient code, but she's got a repeat in there, which is great. Press play. And there she goes, she's done a great job. Go back to edit, well done, Emily. Let's start a new project. Now after you've done that, set a challenge for the kids. You don't want to actually teach everything. You want our kids to explore and to, um, and to create their own project. So we'll do a new project, Emily. And this is the challenge that I'm putting to Emily now. Bring over a character, and I want the character to make a triangle. Now, as Emily's going to have a go with this now, um, as we practiced this before the tutorial, um, we had many failures, many different angles and degrees. Off you go, Em. So we want it to go across first, and it's withdrawing. Um, we actually got it wrong about three or four times before we got the right degrees. And that's fantastic because if we look here and if I just flick over here, test, 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 take a risk. These are the things that we want our students to actually do. So Emily, don't forget to test as you go along as she's doing now. Yep, she's got that right. So the start of this tutorial is actually really, really easy. It's actually going across. Um, I'm watching Emily now. She's actually kind of got her hands moving and trying to work out the degrees, which is fantastic. Doing a great job. Now, this is the tricky bit. She's turned 90, but she needs to turn another half a 90, which is adding an extra 45 degrees to what she actually has. So 90 plus 45 
is oh going uh yep is what and she's worked out it's 135 and so she's going to press that make sure she's on the right angle perfect and now she's got to estimate to see how far that goes down with a trail and she's almost there and that's great you're never going to get it first off so it's great that she's now altering her code to get it absolutely right great job em now our final challenge oh, a little bit more our final challenge will be this and i'm going to let you pause the video to have a go at this i want our students or your children to have a go keep going there emily uh, to have a go at making a circle now, before you have a go at circle, I want you to think about a couple of things. When we rotate or turn, it will be a very small degrees, and each movement before it actually turns will be very small as well. Can you get your character to make a circle? I'm going to let you pause this video. Emily's going to start a new one and see how you go. So pause the video, have a go at making a circle. Okay, how did you go? Fantastic, Emily's gonna show you how to actually do this now and see how close you got it right. It's actually a very simple code. The trickiest bit is actually how many times it rotates. So Emily's actually doing now a, a drawing, leaving with trail, and she's gonna do a very small movement. What did we do last time, Emmy? I think it was about one. And then she's gonna put in a turn in the um, movement, and it's a very, low angle so I think it was two or one depending on how big you want your circle yep and now she's got to put in a repeat now this is the tricky bit because we want it repeating completely round to a circle so Emmy's going to put in a repeat she's going to drag her code inside it and then she's going to press play I'll repeat just say a hundred times M and this is where it's going to be a lot of trial and error so it's a very small circle at the moment so what we might do, Emmy, so everyone can see, is we'll do the move a little bit um, further. So go move forward, say, four, and press play, just so that we can see the code. Oh, that's better, Em. Now, how far does our little guy get across? Oh, how far? It's about halfway, Em. So this is where the mathematics comes in, and Emmy can actually alter that and say, oh, maybe it's uh, 200. Now, another challenge you can actually give to your kids is, um, see if you can get it going around just once and no overlaps. That stops our kids from putting in like a thousand value. Pretty good. I think it's overlapped a little bit, M. so bring it down maybe a couple you can estimate. What do you think? 180, fantastic, tick, and there we go. That's how you make a circle in Hopscotch and explore some really good mathematical coding along the way. Great job, Em. Thank you so much for helping me. And don't forget these really important things. Get our kids to ask smart questions, not something like it doesn't work. Don't forget to get your kids to do the thinking, not you. Take your risk, kids. Don't sit back and say, I don't know what it does. Drag something in and test it. And the fourth rule is test, test, test. The more testing you can do, the more you can learn where you're going wrong with your code. Paul Hamilton here, signing off.